And as you can see, the oxygen is quickly draining. This may not work very well at all. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to do what I'm calling the 50-50 challenge. Let's go ahead and start with these three dupes and hit embark. And as normal, we will go ahead and pause as soon as the dupes appear. And that way we can get a lay of the land. But you know what's better than three dupes? Well, four dupes. In fact, five dupes, six dupes, seven dupes, eight dupes, nine. Yeah, I'll be right back. And there we go. This is 50 dupes. And here's the challenge. Make it to cycle 50 and see how many duplicates you have left. Because yes, many duplicates will die. Whether that be they suffocate because they're going to breathe this oxygen in about two breaths. Give me a second to rename all these dupes to recognize all the members who contribute to this channel. And then I'm going to exit out of debug mode. And then we'll go ahead and start the challenge. And in case you're wondering how we chose all the names, well, I took everybody who subscribed or became a member via Patreon, YouTube membership, and Twitch, put them all on an Excel list, and then randomized it and took the first 50 names. So you may even see some duplicates in here because some of these folks are crazy enough to support me on multiple platforms. Now I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game for just a second just to get all the duplicates on the floor. Then we're going to pause it again to go over the game plan. Yep, that worked. There are a couple roadblocks in our way, as I was alluding to before. Every duplicant here is going to take a 100 gram breath of oxygen every second, which basically is going to delete three of these tiles every single second. This ox light's not going to be enough to support them. The only thing that we have a chance of doing is breaking into these other cavities. And then secondly, we have to worry about food. Right now, we only have 16,000 calories worth of nutrient bar. That only feeds about a third of our duplicates. Now, like I also said, duplicates are going to die. The point of this challenge is not to make sure every duplicate lives, although that would be great, but rather to see how many you can get to survive up until cycle 50. So here's my personal strategy going in. We're going to go on a massive digging spree. We're going to try to get to every cavern that has oxygen. And while we're doing that, we're going to unearth a lot of buried muckroot. Simultaneously, we're going to try to plant as many plants as we can. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with just a few digging commands here. We're not even going to be worrying about such paltry things like bathrooms, at least not to start with. Because I can guarantee before cycle one is even done, I'm sure we're going to have a dead duplicate. We're going to need to get power up immediately to try to get some of this algae into an oxygen diffuser. Let's go ahead and unpause this just for a second because we need a little bit more material to be able to build ladders to go up and then keep digging. All right. Where's the dupes luck? Oh yeah, look at that oxygen just disappearing. <laughs> this may have been my dumbest idea ever. I think this is a good spot. And then we will start digging this way. Beautiful. Now I'm contemplating just emptying this water because there is some oxygen in there. It'll make the dupes soaping wet, but does that really matter? And we might as well dig down as well because I see some more oxygen here. Now the great thing is we're going to be able to dig in a lot of different directions all at once. What's going to stop us is none of these duplicates have any skill points. So unless they happen to have a skill point in hard digging to start with, we're kind of stuck. Another quick unpause. And as you can see, the oxygen is quickly draining. This may not work very well at all. Duplicates are already holding their breath. It seems that we still have some idle dupes here. So we're going to make yet another ladder run with the hopes that we can break into some of this oxygen quicker. Even this polluted oxygen would help. And there's a nice big cavern of oxygen down here. We really need to get to it. Amazingly, we are 25% of the way through this. And the no oxygen symbols are starting to pop up. This is not a good sign. I think we're going to try immediately to get up to this cavern here as well. We don't have to worry too much about digging into these oxalites because they still produce the same amount of oxygen, whether or not they've been digged out. Or at least so I've been told. Where else? Oh, there's a little bit more oxygen up there, but that's really far away. We do already have oxygen diffusers here and some power. We have four oxygen diffusers about to go down. The question is, can the duplicates build them quick enough before they suffocate? 
Well, Renegade 020 might be the first dead duplicate. Apparently, they fell down. I'm going to try to save them, but it doesn't look good. If we can dig these two tiles out and then these six tiles out, they'll be okay. We're going to have to see, though. Look at this. They're going to be able to escape the water so they can breathe. Actually, their chances of breathing were almost just as good sitting under the water. Oh, there's 3,000 grams of oxygen trapped in there. We're going to let that out immediately. So far in all of our digging, we have found 10,000 calories worth of muckroot. Won't be enough, but at least we're making progress. We have made it to this top cavern, which is great because it has a lot of nice oxygen. We're going to go ahead and keep digging up because there's more oxygen up here as well. And then there's also a lot of buried objects. Here's the hoping. Citrus Mod has started running on the wheel. Unfortunately, no one's dropped off any algae yet. Oh, there we go. Oxygen is being produced miraculously. And as a reminder, each oxygen diffuser can support five dupes. So this is only good enough for 20 dupes. Let's put another couple of these down. Now, something I've realized, I'm going to have to split these duplicates up in at least a few schedules because we don't want them all to go to sleep at once. Otherwise, the oxygen diffusers will stop working because no one is going to be running on the manual generator and these batteries aren't going to last very long because the oxygen diffusers themselves take 120 watts apiece. Well, here we go with a little bit more work. All right, here's what we've done. We have two shifts that are completely separate from each other and that way there will always be duplicates working, whether that be digging or on the wheel. I think we're also going to hit a massive harvest on all the plants, at least the ones that are still going to be here after we do our digging. And that way it'll provide just a few more calories. We're also just going to keep dropping the water without care. Eventually, it's all going to end up somewhere down here. In fact, we'll go ahead and dig down even further because I see some more oxygen here. Somehow, miraculously, we have made it a half a cycle in and... We haven't suffocated anybody. We have two of these oxygen banks online right now and three more on the way. That gives us exactly enough oxygen. Now, I don't think these oxygen diffusers will hit max pressure, but we're going to go ahead and put a sixth station down anyways. And I suppose it wouldn't hurt to put down some barracks only because there are some dupes that don't have anything to do. So if they're just sitting here idly, they can start building some of these things. We'll put them at lower priorities just to make sure. We're also going to get basic research going. We don't need much, but at the minimum, we need to be able to plant some food. Another disadvantage of having this many dupes is it's going to be a while before they earn a skill point because there are so many dupes to be able to split the tasks. So to start with, we may be isolated to our starting biome. Oddly enough, there's not a single idle dupe. That's kind of impressive. And even though it looks like we still have plenty that we can be doing, we're starting to run out of dig commands. So I think we can go ahead and spare some resources to put down some outhouses. But no, I'm not building 25 outhouses. Ah, there we go. The almighty planter box. What else would be very helpful here? I would say the grills so we could maybe make some more food by killing the hatches and then grilling up the meat into barbecue. I was thinking about the big battery, but it really doesn't matter because we have so many dupes to be able to run on the wheel. So for now, we're just going to start with basic farming so we can get the planter boxes in. And it's night night time for the dupes on the end of their first cycle and no one has died yet. Unfortunately, not enough of the beds got finished. So some people had some very uncomfortable sleeping conditions. I broke down and made some outhouses. Although we just don't have the room to make as many sinks as we do outhouses. We don't have a lot of room and we have to start putting in some meal lice or something. Speaking of which, planter box research is done. So we're just going to start spamming planter boxes everywhere. That definitely doesn't look like a great place to sleep, especially while people are actively using the facilities. All said and done, there are 16 outhouses, which should be good enough. And I say that and somebody has already wet their pants. To be fair, we weren't going to be able to avoid food poisoning anyways. Amazingly, we're in the middle of cycle two and we still have 30,000 calories worth of muckroot left. I realized that even in these critical times, we still have to have standards. For some reason, I messed up our four tile high rooms. We're going to go ahead and get that fixed. But more seriously, it's going to give us more room to be able to put down more mealwood. In fact, we have some blossom seeds too. So we're going to research the lamp and some ceiling lights and start growing them as well. I absolutely foobarred this one. Somehow, this floor didn't start until like six tiles high. I guess we were moving kind of fast there in the beginning. 
Because of all of our digging that we did at the beginning, we actually found a lot of mealwood seeds. 21 of them, in fact, and we're not done digging yet, which gives us a great start to getting some early food production. We also found 10 blossom seeds so far, but I really need to fix these because being able to get into these buried objects is critical. I suppose in this case, we can just split this level in half and we can put even more cots right here. This is actually much smarter. Right now, a majority of our digging is down here. We're still on the hunt for more seeds, more hatches. It would probably help if I put another oxygen system down here too. I am well aware we're not going to have enough algae to last us 50 cycles. We're going to keep an eye on it and see how fast we're using it and then hope for the best. We also can start digging out all this slime and converting the slime into algae. And then as a last resort, we can start setting up a bunch of electrolyzers. But we're only trying to get to 50 cycles, right? Research is completed on farm tiles, so in our bristle blossoms are going to be going. Now we're going to keep planting as many as we can. The great thing about this short-term challenge is you don't really have to worry about running out of water. Algae, maybe. I also started moving around our cops a little bit into these little two-tile high barracks. They'll be able to get the morale bonus, but what I'm worried about is the oxygen. Because so many dupes will be breathing and exhaling in here, we may not get enough oxygen until we get those airflow tiles completed. But at the end of each barracks, we have one of these little oxygen systems here, so I'm hoping that helps. Very exciting, our first printing pod. Now remember, we did go into debug mode just to create the dupes, but we took ourselves out of debug mode when we reloaded the game. That way we keep everything on the up and up. So we might see some unexpected things inside the printing pod. In this case, though, we'll definitely take and be grateful for the 5,000 calories worth of muckroot. I think we're also going to be tapping into this polluted dirt. Now, the duplicates breathing polluted oxygen is not great, but it's better than not breathing at all. And we already have... A half a ton of polluted dirt so putting some of these sublimation stations around will definitely help at the minimum it'll help prolong the algae we're also going around and putting tiles every location that we see algae and trying to dig out as many of these buried objects as possible now we still can't get into the granite because we don't have any hard digging but such is life we're about to hit cycle four and i believe this is the cycle we're gonna start to seeing some dead dupes we're down to 489 calories we are planting all the seeds as fast as we can, but it's still not quite enough. I guess the next thing we can do is kill every single critter we see. That'll be a little bit of meat. We're just putting a blanket attack command because some of these hatches are going to be hiding. Stress is also starting to be a problem. It's probably because they keep walking through puddles of water, but we are getting that cleaned up as much as possible. We finished research on the supercomputer, which is great. Unfortunately, unless there's a duplicate who started with advanced research, we're not going to be able to use it. The reason why it's kind of critical is I really wanted to get some airflow tiles in here. For now, the duplicates seem to be doing okay, but I'm hoping these little oxygen centers here will help. Also, chances are not all of these barracks are going to be full at the same time. So on this level, there may be only five dupes sleeping at a time. Clicking through the dupes, it does look like we do have one dupe that started with grilling. That's going to come in handy. Nice job, Carol. Ed here started with Masterworks decorating. Probably the least useful skill to have in one of these challenges. But what else would we expect from Ed, who likes to sabotage all of our attempts? Komori actually started with hard digging. Now that I know this, it might open up some additional opportunities for expansion and gathering more food. Ryan Healy started with mechatronics engineering what an incredible dupe squish at started with some plumbing that could be convenient the ghost rider also started with hard digging that's great that we have two of them and that is it for our free skills so i think we will throw an electric grill down it's not going to be too convenient because we're not going to be able to cook as much food as we need but at the minimum we'll be able to cook some of the pickled meal to get the food poisoning off of it and possibly even make some of the bristle berries into gristle berries which does have a calorie improvement it's not great only going from 1600 to 2000 calories but it's better than nothing i think we're definitely going to unlock some of this polluted oxygen because the polluted water will continuously off gas and we can take a lot of this slime get it refined back into algae unfortunately to get distillation to get the algae distiller it's locked behind supercomputers and we just don't have a duplicate that can use the supercomputer yet now i know i keep saying this but we've actually made it to cycle five and no one's died yet 
This is definitely going to be the time where somebody dies. We're down to 989 calories at the beginning of the cycle. And it stinks too because we're at 91% with this much mealwood here. But let's be clear, it's going to be a massive death wave. On the good news, our little oxygen systems inside the barracks have turned out to be pretty efficient. I would have bet a bottom dollar that the first duplicate was going to die of suffocation, not starvation. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. All the mealwood's going to come in. We're about to make it to cycle six, and we still have 50 duplicates. And the great thing with all those mealwoods coming up, it gave us nine more mealwood seeds that we've already replanted. And hopefully when all of these blossoms are harvested, we'll get some more seeds and be able to continue planting them as well. We've also found a better use for our sublimation stations. And we're going to put them at the bottom where we're still doing some digging because that is where oxygen is the worst, but we don't necessarily need it there as much as we need it up by the barracks and all the bathrooms. But all the polluted dirt being generated by these outhouses is going right back in to oxygen supply. So Lucky88 has earned our first skill point of the colony. No, it was actually Squishat who earned the first skill point of the colony. So whether they like it or not, they're going into advanced research. I know it's not what you're most interested in, fellas, but we gotta do what we gotta do. All right, Randy, I don't ask for much. We've made it almost seven cycles without a duplicate dying. Oh, great printing pod. Please grant me the bounty of food. Shine, nymph eggs. That's not helpful. I guess we're going to have to take the algae. We've already started getting some body temperature problems out of the mealwood, so we're definitely going to dig this one up and replant it somewhere else. And then we're probably going to throw some tiles down right here. That way we can stop a little bit of the heat coming in. Even though we do have some fairly decent area to put down some more mealwood. Wit was our third dupe with its skill points. So they're going into hard digging. Because the sooner we can dig through this stuff, the sooner we can get the lunch. Literally, it's starting to look pretty bad. We have 10 dupes with the starvation tag. Surely it's going to be cycle 7. A lot more of the dupes are starting to get their skill point in. So they're going right into some more digging. You get some digging, you get some digging, you get some digging. Everybody's getting some digging. We're trying everything we can. I probably should have started some of the microbe mushers a little bit sooner, but this is really going to crush our dirt and water supply, but we got to do what we got to do. Now, I've never actually had four microbe muster running at the same time, but they each need their own circuit because they draw 240 watts. So we're setting up two stations. Additionally, they don't work very quickly. So even with all eight of these running at the same time, I still don't like our chances. And then over here, there's a cool steam vent that's gonna eventually start heating all this up. We have insulated tiles on the research pipeline, but it's gonna be a minute before we can get to them. It also has the unfortunate side effect of crushing our dupe labor. We really would like to get in here to be able to start killing some of these sweetles and growing some spindly grub fruit plants. One of the great things about the spindly grub fruit plant is they can go all the way up to 50 degrees. So some of these areas that are already getting too warm for mealwood or bristle blossoms will be able to support the spindly grub fruit plant. Along the way, we've actually finished the airflow tiles that will definitely help with dropping some of this carbon dioxide. And we don't need to worry too much about the carbon dioxide on the bristle blossoms because they can grow in carbon dioxide. And as expected, the dupe labor behind these microbe mushers is taking its toll. There is some mealwood right here ready to be harvested and no dupes coming to get it. Also, a lot of our oxygen centers are sitting without power. We may start upgrading to the jumbo batteries. That may help a little bit. And duplicates, we're done disinfecting things. Thank you very much. Okay, dupes, seriously, what is going on here? Look at all this meal lice ready to be harvested. Oh, thank you, Randy. There's another four duplicates worth of food. And for the first time in a long time, we actually have no dupes that are starving. We've just started cycle 10. We have four and a half thousand calories in the bank. All these beautiful bristle blossoms are starting to come up. And for some reason, Squishat is still sleeping on the floor. Maybe it was a narcoleptic nap because there's 52 cots sitting here. I'm also going to outsmart the system just a little bit. And we're going to change every single duplicate's priority to be higher in farming. That way we know all the farming's being done immediately. Our insulated tiles have just finished and we're not going to take any more chances with this. We're just going to go straight up over the top and that should help us fend off some of the heat coming from over here. I do think it is time to go fishing though. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. I thought about starting to put in some nice to haves like a mess hall, but I don't have a lot of area for it. This whole area here is going to be used as our carbon sink. I suppose we could make some room up here. 
let's do that. And it looks like we finally have a spot where there's nothing but solid carbon dioxide, so we're even going to throw down some mushrooms. Unfortunately, even though we have 50 duplicates, yes, we still have 50, duplicate labor is actually crushing me. These microbe mushers take a lot of deliveries and take up a lot of the duplicate's time. Cycle 12 printing pod was kind to us and gave us 5,000 more calories of muck root. We've managed to get four spindly grub fruits planted. We have a couple more coming up here. Though we need to be somewhat careful because there's another cool steam vent here. But I spy four more spindly grub fruit plants. We are up over 25,000 calories. So we're going to throw a caution to the wind and turn two of these micro mushers off. It'll save us a little bit of dupe labor. And if we drop below, say, 10,000 calories again, we'll turn them back on. One of the big reasons we're doing that is because we're down to 275 tons of dirt. And if we run out of dirt, we're not going to be able to fertilize these mealwoods, and that would be pretty much game over. The good news is everywhere we look, we're still finding a little bit more dirt. But outside this starting biome, chances are you're not going to find any more. We're also starting to run a little thin on algae down to 37 tons. And just to make sure that we can get it to the 50 cycle mark, I think it would be smart to start using some of this water and setting up a simple electrolyzer system. Speaking of required research, we finally got around to getting jumbo batteries. So I'll be upgrading those in the background and along the way, making sure we get these electrolyzers. Incredibly, we're actually over the curve. So we're going to turn two more mush bar stations off. We have 58 thousand calories which is enough for an entire cycle the printing pod gave us a snazzy suit and although we can't eat it we can at least wear it agent mcb is first alphabetically so they get the honor we're now up to ninety thousand calories which means we can turn off a couple more of the microbe mushers for the interesting stats we're down to 29 tons of algae and 278 tons of dirt I think we're going to be okay on the dirt, and I'm starting to track how much algae we're using per cycle, and it doesn't look to be too significant. In fact, if we're using less than one ton per day, we'll make it to cycle 50. Here at the end of cycle 18, it looks like we're using almost three tons of algae per day. So, time to start building some electrolyzers. We find ourselves on cycle 24, and we're back down to 4,000 calories. I don't know what happened. I was busy doing some digging and some setting up of some electrolyzers. I look up and we have 4,000 calories. So we've turned the mush bars back on. Hopefully we can get the calories corrected so that we can turn our attention to oxygen because it's going to be the problem next. All this sopping wet and digging through this giant lake is starting to cause some real productivity issues in our colony. So instead of digging down here to try to access this water, we have a couple of options. We could sieve all this polluted water and send it into some electrolyzers. Or we can just open up as much of the polluted water as we can and just let it continuously off gas. Now we have 13 duplicates with a mixture of slime lung and food poisoning, but all that polluted water off gassing is actually saving us algae. So I say it's worth a case of slime lung or two. So we have a rudimentary electrolyzer system again. We only need 20 more cycles. So as long as we can stop the bleeding on the algae, we'll be okay. Small liquid pump being fed by a couple bottle emptier speeds right into a couple of electrolyzers. From there, everything gets siphoned up by these two gas pumps. Hydrogen is going to go up one way. Everything else is going to go up another. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, and polluted oxygen are going to get dumped off right here. And at the top of the base, the hydrogen is going to keep going all the way up here. And once we dig all the way up here, we'll move the hydrogen again. And seeing that we're back up at 91,000 calories, I figure we can use some of this slime and we're going to end up refining it using algae distillers. It's not going to be a lot, but quite frankly, we don't need a lot. A couple of other updates, our spindly grub fruits are doing just fine, as is all of our dust caps creating a bunch of fried mushrooms for us. On the food production front, we've added a bunch of grills. And since we have so many cooks now, we're actually able to cook the majority of our food before it gets eaten. There are little things that you can do around the colony when you have some downtime. Well, if you get some downtime, for instance, we moved Ryan Healy here because they were snoring. We didn't catch it for a while, but once we did, we knew we needed to separate Ryan from everybody else because he was hurting their quality of sleep. Likewise, adding some lights over the grills will also help improve our cook time. I mean, it's not bad progress for 30 cycles. I am very glad we're not going past 50 because it is definitely an interesting challenge, but not one that you don't have to head into some, let's say, creative direction. Morale's actually not doing too bad, which is really helping out the dupes. We have all these barracks, 
And then additionally, we have two of the dirtiest Great Halls you've ever seen. But it served us well. You can see all the dupes have 9, 10, 14 morale. And we don't need them to have but one or two points each. Mostly it's digging, cooking, and researching. But after that, that's sort of the great thing about this challenge. You can throw caution in the wind. Like, have you ever seen a bathroom like this? Haha! <laughs> Or for that matter, an electrolyzer set up like this. But it's working great. We still have 18 tons of algae. End of cycle 35 and we have a couple of small updates for you. This system over here is working wonderfully. I'm not saying I'd ever use it again, but the hydrogen can't get out because it's too low. And then the carbon dioxide sticks down here. So everything gets absorbed inside these two gas pumps. We also rerouted the pipes to be able to come from our main water tank here. And that main water tank is being supplied by a water sieve being fed by all this polluted water. If things get desperate enough, we can put a couple more of these in and stretch our algae supplies even further. We also added in a couple of refrigerators. Now, they don't get used too much because the prospect of bringing cooked food up here instead of the duplicates eating it first is a little thin, but... If we ever get that far ahead, we'll have refrigerators right next to the Great Halls. So far, we're working out well. I'll see you in a few more cycles with another update. Cycle 41 update, we're sitting at 110,000 calories, 15 tons of algae, 26 tons of polluted dirt, and 38 tons of slime. We even took the time to add a carbon skimmer to get a handle on some of this carbon dioxide that's been collecting for the past 41 cycles. We also added an apothecary and are going to start cranking out some vitamin chews. That way, maybe we can reduce the risk of slime lung just a little bit. Funny enough, though, I went through all 50 dupes to try to find who had an interest in medicine compounding, and there were only two, Dead Man Gene and the infamous Wit. But all the vitamin chews take is one kilo of coal. Coal we won't be using, so this kind of makes sense. Other than that, everything's looking gravy. I think we're going to be able to coast right into 50 cycles. Other than some slight temperature issues being caused to some of the mealwood, so we're just going to supplement the mealwood with some additional spindly grub fruits and several more dust caps. After all, we're still sitting at 40 tons of slime. And look at that. The colony even got a pet. I'd like to name the pip. Something fitting for this run. Let me hear your creative ideas in the comments below. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. 50 cycles Yay! with 50 duplicates. Look, I'm just as surprised as you are that we didn't manage to kill a single duplicate. When I was going over my strategy in this challenge, I just knew there would be some dead duplicates to start off with. Being able to feed 50 duplicates from the very first cycle is definitely a challenge. And then the challenge kind of shifts from food to oxygen and then back to food throughout the 50 cycles. Not to mention dealing with slime lung, allergies, and the occasional bit of stress, I highly recommend trying this challenge out for yourself. It definitely turns some concepts of how we play Arnie on their head. And if you're a member of some other Oxygen Not Included communities, feel free to let them know about this challenge, because I think it'd be great to see some other videos of different content creators taking their own personal stab at this. It is definitely hectic from the very beginning, but that's part of the fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments below. And don't forget to try to think of some creative names for our adorable little Pip. I hope you had a great time in this episode. I know I did, and I'll talk to you soon.